more than ever, our seeds are vulnerable, up against disease and a changing environment. Many of them seeds that sprout the food we eat. This week, Down to Earth looks at how wild cousins of our crops could safeguard our food security. I am Chris Cockell, and we're sitting in front of the seed vault at the Millennium Seed Bank at Wakehurst Place. What's different about the Millennium Seed Bank is that we store the wild species, so these species that perhaps are not conserved elsewhere. These are irreplaceable collections in many cases, and in some cases there are actually species in the bank that are extinct in the wild. We have uh, six minus 20 cold stores where the, the seeds are stored, and the idea is to prolong the life of the seeds to allow them to remain in a stable condition so that they can be turned back into plants. But a crop wide relative can be thought of as, the, uh, as a cousin of our domesticated crops. So virtually all the foods that we eat have been domesticated to some extent. Many of these um, crops are, are already suffering from issues with yield and susceptibility to certain diseases that we need to face sooner rather than later. These wild relatives have been living on the margins, surviving in hostile conditions, and so they've adapted in the process of you know, evolution to cope with these pressures. The Crop Wild Relative Project is collecting the crop wild relatives of 29 domesticated crops, such as wheat, rice, barley, oats, uh, things like that, to banana, potatoes. There have certainly been challenges that our partners have had to face, so dealing with leeches in Nepal or dealing with crocodiles in Costa Rica, in Nigeria they had to deal with uh, Boko Haram insurgents. We're not a, um, uh, a museum for seeds, we actively want people to use them. Humans are already relying on a very limited number of crops for the majority of what we eat. Of the 6,000 plant species cultivated for food consumption, just nine of them account for two-thirds of what we grow, which means that any threat to them through disease or extreme weather means a threat to our food security. It leaves us with two options, increase the variety of what we eat or make our favourite crops stronger, a type of insurance policy if or when disaster strikes. I'm Julie King. Um, I work here at the University of Nottingham, um, breeding wheat, but using the wild relatives um, to introduce new traits into the wheat. So we take wheat, we just cross it to a wild relative. So we take the male gametes and we put them onto the wheat um, to make a new seed, which will be a hybrid or a, a cross between the two. We take a sort of scraggy looking wild relative, um, but because we only transfer a very small bit of it, then it only has a very small effect. We take the seed or we take the DNA from the plants into the lab. Um, we look at the chromosomes on the microscope. We look at them using markers uh, to see if we have a segment, how many segments, how, what size the segment it is. None of our work is GMO because all of what we do can actually happen in nature. Our biggest success story would be where one of our collaborators has screened just the first 20 plants that we made available. And out of just those 20, he's found um, rust resistance. So with the hundreds that are coming along it do, in the pipeline, we hope to find a lot more. I like being able to make things. I like being able to see the results of what we do. And also a major driving force is the good that we could do at the end of it. In reality, we've already lost thousands of varieties of everyday foods, including potatoes, carrots and apples, and with it, their unique tastes. Biodiversity loss is not only a problem for food security, but also our cultural heritage. 
I'm Shane Holland, I'm the Executive Chairman of Slow Food in the UK. Hi, I'm Barry Nichols, I'm Group Executive Chef with Grayson's, uh, we're the UK's leading sustainable caterer. One of the things that's important to us is that, is that we do preserve uh, Brit our British heritage, our food heritage. So Yarka Taste is a global programme of foods which are from a particular area but also at risk of dying out. Um, so we have 5,000 of those products um, around the world um, in 160 countries. It is a red list for food. Um, not all of them are absolutely going to die tomorrow, but they're all really going to be, you know, dying out very soon. So here we've got the russet apple, which we've talked about. It's dying out because it doesn't look particularly beautiful. Barry and I, we really love it. And it looks fantastic. I mean, it's got a really lovely kind of rustic, rusty brown colour. So initially, just visually, it looks amazing. Um, the taste, it's really crisp, really sharp, delicious flavour. So by getting um, Arc of Taste products into our supply chain, onto our menus, we're also using that as a process of education for our customers as well so people can actually physically taste it. The only way these things continue is if we use So it. I'm going yeah. to eat this now. Please do enjoy. It's delicious. <laughs>